according to Surah 2, verse 282 of the Quran, the testimony of a woman is worth half the testimony of a man. Muhammad explains why in Sahih al-Bukhari 2658. The Prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The women said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of her mind. The testimony of women is unreliable because women are stupid. Muhammad also claims that women are morally deficient. In Sahih al-Bukhari 1052, Muhammad says that most of the people in hell are women. He tells us why in Sahih Muslim 142. O women folk, you should give charity and ask much forgiveness, for I saw you in bulk amongst the dwellers of hell. A wise lady among them said, why is it, Messenger of Allah, that our folk are in bulk in hell? Upon this, the Holy Prophet observed, you curse too much and are ungrateful to your spouses. I have seen none lacking in common sense and failing in religion, but at the same time robbing the wisdom of the wise besides you. Since women are intellectually and morally inferior to men, they sometimes need to be disciplined. Allah tells Muslim men how to discipline their wives in Surah 4, verse 34 of the Quran. Men are in charge of women because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other and because they spend of their property for the support of women. So good women are the obedient, guarding in secret that which Allah hath guarded. As for those from whom ye fear rebellion, admonish them and banish them to beds apart and scourge them. Then if they obey you, seek not a way against them. In Sahih al-Bukhari 5825, Muhammad's child bride, Aisha, sees a woman whose husband had beaten her so severely her skin turned green. Aisha takes the woman to Muhammad and says, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. This is Aisha, the mother of the faithful, saying that Muslim women were being treated worse than pagan women. Why were Muslim women being treated worse? I suggest it has something to do with Allah's commands in here. And if you are expecting Muhammad to punish the man for beating his wife until her skin turned green, you don't understand Islam. Muhammad rebuked the woman for being a bad wife. Now if that's how the Quran commands Muslims to treat their own wives, you can imagine what Allah and Muhammad have to say about non-Muslim women. Surah 23 verses 1 through 6 and Surah 70 verses 22 through 30 say that Muslims can have sex with female captives and slave girls. The Quran even allows Muslims to rape female captives who are married. In Surah 4 verse 24, Allah tells his followers, also prohibited are women already married except those whom your right hands possess. Married women are prohibited, this is about sex, unless you possess them by capturing them in battle. The historical background of this verse is found in Sunan Abu Dawud, number 2150. The apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Autos on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the apostle of Allah were reluctant to have intercourse with the female captives in the presence of their husbands who were unbelievers. So Allah, the exalted, sent down the Quranic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hands possess. That is to say, they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. Think about this. Muslims come up to Muhammad and say, we know we're allowed to have sex with our captives, but these women have husbands. Isn't that, isn't that adultery, Muhammad? The answer is yes, but it's okay with Allah. So according to Islam, women are stupid and immoral, and you can beat them and rape them, even if they're married, and regardless of how young they are. This is the Islam you don't hear about on PBS or the BBC.